got some toys. Normally this is the part that makes me very excited. But these toys mean that I now have to start building a lot of cables. So, nothing to be done but get at it. Yoink! So the plan right now is to try to make... I need 90 bus bars. I think I'm going to make enough wire for 100. Why 100? It's a round number. That means I need 400 8 centimeter lengths. <sighs> I'm both looking forward to this and very much not looking forward to this. All right, what have we got in this box? That's paperwork. Let me bring you in so you can see what I'm opening here. I mean, it's no great secret if you watched the video where I was choosing all of my parts. What I still don't have is, whoa, falls the main Blue Sea switches. The company hasn't gotten back to me with an updated price. So one of the things I'm curious about, did I actually get the tinned T-Class um, fuses? Come on. So you're going to find out with me. No, these are not tinned. These are the same copper as I have before. All right. These are obviously all of the ring terminals. I realized after I placed the order that I might have wanted to get four full boxes. I didn't leave myself a lot of spare ring terminals, but so be it. If I do run short, then, well, I'll order what I need and some extra stuff for my little library of parts. Oh! Well, I mean, I guess they gave me a convenient bag to catch them in. Ha ha, yeah! The boots. God, this is going to class this up so nice. I mean, it actually serves a purpose, but it's going to look so damn professional. These boots are kind of part of the overkill part of the project. I mean, I can easily justify them because they do provide a watertightness. But if I'm being completely honest with y'all, I... Uh, I kind of just think they look really cool. Actually, it serves a practical purpose too, because as a few people pointed out in the comment section, what are you gonna do about insurance? Insurance won't insure you if you've got lithium. I mean, to be honest, I, I was having a really hard time getting insurance anyway. By building everything to ABYC standards and having extra protection like this, I'm actually like not joking. I'm hoping that's gonna help convince an insurance company that this is a, yes, it's a DIY build, but it's built properly. And, you know, so please give me insurance. Because if I'm completely honest right now, I don't know how I'm getting insurance. That's very much in the, uh, we will cross that bridge when we get to it. Which is never the way I like to do things, but what can you do? Load. <laughs> oh, this makes me so happy. It is one of the stupidest things that makes me happy. Oh, this is gonna look so goddamn professional. What is this? Oh, moisture sensitive. That's not good because the whole idea behind buying these was that they are going to be... Why are they moisture sensitive? Oh dear. Did I get the wrong stuff? These were not cheap, if my memory serves me right. I really hope I didn't get the wrong parts because I'm opening the package. That's going to make it a lot harder to return if these are the wrong ones. Well, that's them. All right. Well, that goes in this pile. It's the part of the project where I find myself thinking, man, what have I forgotten? What have I forgotten? What have I forgotten? I don't think I've forgotten everything, anything. I mean, y'all sat there and watched me. Well, some of you sat there and watched me. Oh, it's going to be so much fun to build these. If this shit ain't Lego for grown-ups, then... Uh, I don't know what is, and I need to go talk to the Danes. That's all the Anderson stuff. All right, what else have we got here? Ring terminals. Oh, there's gonna be a big pack of little ring terminals, isn't there? The purple ones. Yes. There should be 100 here, shouldn't there? 110? Yep, quantity 110. Why are they in this little package? I'm gonna put them in this bigger package because that says what they are. These look really big. I mean, I did my checks. Oh yeah, nope, they're fine. There's all the ring terminal connectors. Still waiting for the BMSs to show up. Apparently they're in Canada now. I think these are the last things we'll do to save my future self some agony. I'll get these all out and into one package. 
I really have to turn my attention sooner than later to how I'm going to build these boxes. I'm currently leaning towards fiberglass, but I've never done fiberglass before, and that is making me nervous. Why? I don't know. I've been able to do everything else I've set my mind to, but for some reason, that scares me. There. The work area is clear. Yeah, those batteries are kind of blocking your view, aren't they? Move the batteries over here. Obviously, I don't do any kind of sponsorships or any types of things like that when it comes to this channel. This is just a build channel. I mention that right now because after my last video where I was going through and trying to figure out the cables, um, Paul from Powerwall Paul. Anybody who's seen Andy's channel knows of Powerwall Paul. He reached out to me very kindly and he never asked me to say anything saying, hey, listen, I've got a whole pile of welding wire that would be really good for short flexible bus bars and would be easier to build. And he was like, you know, do, do you want them? I have lots of them. I've got nothing to use them for. If they were tinned and he wasn't on the other side of the planet from me, I probably would have taken him up on the offer. It's not worth it to ship across to um, from Australia to Canada, unfortunately. So I, as gracious as the offer was, I declined. Um, but one of the things I was talking to him about was, well, why don't you just put them up for sale and sell them for a decent price? And he might actually do that, and I hope he does. And I'm mentioning this here because if he does, I, I, I love people who are really kind, and he seems genuinely very kind, and he speaks highly of him as well. So, yeah, if you happen to catch the Powerwall Paul page, and especially if you're down in the Australian side of the little planet, um, Give him, a, give him a shout. He seems like a nice guy and seems genuinely deserving of it. So, it'd be nice if I had a little spindle I could put this on so I could coil it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one piece and it's going to become, whether it turns out to be exactly eight um, centimeters or not, I don't particularly care. What matters to me is that all of my cuts are consistent. So I'm going to hold on to this one and it is going to become my template that I'm going to use to cut all of the others. Let's see how close to 80 centimeters to, or 80 millimeters that I get. Damn, if I don't say so myself, I think I got that one pretty close on. I have no idea if that's coming through on camera, but that's pretty darn near dead on 80 millimeters. I'm really happy with that. One down, 400 to go. <laughs> all right, well, no complaining, just working. I will probably figure out ways to make this more efficient as I get into the swing of it. So I am expecting this is going to speed up over time. I was trying to think of a jig I could make that would make this really quick. If I had a, a guillotine that I thought could cut this without destroying the blade, I could put a stop in it and just go shh, tunk, shh, tunk. That'd be really fast. I don't even thought of making one, but I don't plan to do this ever again. So I think I'm just going to suffer through it. So what I'm trying to do here is there's the flat side of the blade and then there's the curved side. What I'm trying to do is line up the ends like this, get them touching, and then butt it up against the uh, flat portion. And that's pretty close. Oh, I'm going to very quickly mix up which one's which. I should mark this somehow so I know this is my, my reference piece. Oh, I have an old sticker. The sticker is no good and I don't particularly care point is, it's a sticker I can use to identify my reference cable. I should also mention, there is no way in God's green earth I am finishing this today. So, expect wardrobe changes. You know, one thing I didn't figure out was how many feet of cable I had on my original roll. I assumed I didn't have enough and I bought another roll. It'd be funny if I ended up getting everything I needed out of this one roll and I just had a whole new spare of 10 gauge. I'm sure over time I will use it for other jobs. Actually, one of the things I'm thinking of doing when the, when the boat's done and I start traveling, I don't want to be just another travel channel. That would be really quite boring. There's enough of them out there. But what might be fun would be a, see who here is Canadian. Anyone who grew up in Canada in the 80s will probably remember the TV show, The Littlest Hobo. It was the story of a German shepherd that would show up in a random town, help solve some problem, and then disappear again. The theme song for it is 
iconic. It's to this day still one of my favorite songs of all times. I thought it might be kind of fun when the boat is done and I'm actually traveling to go and find random people in random ports wherever I happen to be and help them out with an electrical problem on their boat. And while doing that, talk to them, get to know them, find out where they've traveled, what motivated them to get a boat, what their favorite foods are. I, I don't know. I've always been fascinated by this idea that everybody wants to interview famous people. I've always wanted to get to know random people. Like I've always had this like crazy obsession to just stop a random person outside of a grocery store. Say, come with me, we're gonna get a coffee, I wanna hear your life story. Because there's so many people that just blend into the background of our lives that we never really think twice about. And I keep wondering like, what's their favorite food? What scares them the most? What are they most proud of? Onwards and onwards. <laughs> this isn't even 10. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's gonna last. Repetitive strain injury? What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is one tenth of what I need. I'm gonna go get my headphones so I can listen to music while doing this. Twenty. Cut enough for 30 cables and my hands are already hurting. That's a, that's a great sign. What you save in treasure, you pay in labor. But what you pay in labor, you gain in knowledge. That is the wastage of the first roll. I think that's not too bad. <sighs> 70. <laughs> How many? Seven, zero, 70. Cookie break. Prost. Ninety. That is technically all of we need, but I'm going to make ten more for redundancy. Inevitably, some of these are going to be not great. One hundred. My arm hurts, but it it's not as bad as I was worried. I think I am done for the night. Another day, another task. Let's start cutting off a little bit of the shielding on both sides of all of these to get them ready for crimping on the connectors. This is gonna be probably pretty quick for you. It will not be pretty quick for me. How about I go live and see uh, who might be around on a Friday evening? Maybe have some company while I do this tedious work. Now to wait to see if anybody actually shows up. I didn't announce this. That was an absolutely lovely live stream, but in two hours I only managed to cut 20 flexible bus bars worth of cables. So now the live stream's over. I need to really buckle down and get to it. So let's keep going. Batch three of 10. All right, let's get some energetic music going here. Actually, watch some YouTube videos. Wow. Pulled a wire through this one. I am not gonna have a hundred when I'm done, but that's okay. That's why I made so many extras.
Every now and then I go to cut one of these and some of the strands will get ripped out. What I'm going to try doing is I'm going to bend it before I actually cut it and see if that bend helps prevent a single thread from being ripped out because I've lost a few of them now. See if that helps. All right, there's another 30 or another 10. I can only imagine how much more tedious it would be if I didn't have this tool. Trying to cut these with edge cutters or with a knife. Oh yee. Grabbing them and giving it a bend before I actually cut is, seems to be doing a good job at preventing individual threads from being ripped out. 40 flexible bus bars. Ha 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 ha. That is another 10 cables. I have 50 more to go, but I think my poor back needs a rest. I think tomorrow I can knock out the other 50 and then uh, start actually crimping. See you in the morning. Another wardrobe change and uh, another bunch more cables to keep stripping. So we got half done last night. Let's try to finish up today. That's 60 cables. Well, that one's ruined. 70. That's 90. Whatever I get now is bonus. And that is nine more. These are all my extras anyway. Once I have 90 flexible bus bars with good tested resistance, I'm not gonna make any, well, I might make a couple more extra. I didn't get too many extras of these. I really wish I had bought four full boxes, but that's too late now. I had originally wanted to finish this and then stop and go take a break but the camera's sd card filled up right at the end by the time i dumped the camera i figured time to make some dinner and now we're on to the evening adult beverages and my back is rested so uh let's start crimping and as with the other steps the first few crimps are going to be slow while i figure out my rhythm let's try not to get too much cat hair in them it's been a little while since i uh Made a crimp. I don't imagine you can see any of this, but, oh, ha, I didn't even turn the camera down. Let's do our first of mm, about 200 crimps. And as before, the barrel flares a bit towards the end. So I'm going to back it off and then recrimp it to make sure that I crunch in the back as well to get as much, get as much pressure between the ring terminal barrel and the wires as I can. There we go. Doing my best to make sure that these two stay level. It seems to be about level. All right. What I'm trying to do here is I don't want to just turn it off because then this piston goes all the way back. And that means a lot more pumping before it closes up enough to have bite. But there. The first of 90. Hopefully you can see that. For consistency, I'm always going to measure the end of the ring terminal to the end of the ring terminal. 0.11 milliohm. How much different is if I check at the base? Huh, 0.07 milliohm. Gives you an idea of just how quickly resistance goes up. From in here, 0.07, to out here, 0.11. Our number to beat is 0.1 milliohm. I think now I remember what I was doing was I was getting one started and then putting the wires in. It's starting to come back to me now. No strands lined up properly. 
double crimp. Yeah, pre-mounting that definitely made life a lot easier. Come on, and I'll go in there. Get to know each other very well. That's two made. Let's see if we get point 0.11 again. Point 0.11, so that's consistent. And this is the process I'm going to repeat. So I'm going to put some music back on and just keep at it. Point 0.12, point 0.8. So this one has a slightly worse crimp. There we go, that's a point 0.12. So I'm going to put that there. Oh, tatters, you gonna come up? We're gonna have a Kinti interlude here. Wanna say hi, YouTube? <laughs> You're like, Ma, what I actually want is food. <laughs> You're blinking from the lights. Why are you pulling my shirt down? The adorable old man. It stopped recording. Uh, in case it stopped recording, the last one was floating between 11 and 12, but it settled on 11, so it's gone into the 11 pile. Yeah, that one's going 11 and 12 as well. Hmm. Well, let's do a science. If we recrimp it, does it get better? Just one side. Let's see if that made a difference. Yeah, I felt a little bit of give on that, and now it dropped down to 11. Oh, there you go. So I think it's fairly safe to say that 11 milliohms is reasonable. So there, we're going to just crimp them until they hit to 11 milliohms each. All right, I don't think this is my best one. So let's see if that actually translates to a difference in resistance. The reason I say it's not my best one is you can see how much I left out on that one. But the resistance is what tell. 13, ha, that wire sticking out just that bit was enough to increase this to 13. That was kind of fun, how I could almost tell before I checked it that it was bad. I guess that's what it is to start to get a feel for something. That one felt good. So does feel good equals test good? That's 14. Why is this so much higher? Let's try recrimping it. Oh, I actually feel this one giving, which then gives me hope if this comes back at 11, can I recrimp the other one that I gave up on and get it? Well, let's see if this one improves first. Second double crimp. Does that make a difference? 11, 10, yes it does. Let's try recrimping this one. All right, did that make a difference? No, nope, that one's still um, 14 and that's probably because there's less contact area because this wire's pulled back. All right, we are learning. 11, good. Hmm, this one is a bit short. The first 10, 80 more to go. So the cells are all rated at 0.21 milliohms. So these have significantly less resistance than the internals of the batteries themselves, which I am quite pleased with. Ah, George, I think I might be getting the hang of this, she says right before she jinx herself. I love how consistent this is coming out at 0.11 milliohms. Did my crimpers just give up the ghost? Okay, it's all the way tight. Nope, I must have had that back a little bit. It felt like it was slipping. 0.11, we're good. Good little crimper, keep on going. May all your faults be human error. Out of curiosity, what was the uh, internal resistance of the original one? Point 0.11, perfect. 20, ha 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 ha. It has 0.11 milliohm resistance. Oh no. Well, I guess we're gonna see how much a couple of strands makes a difference when it comes to total resistance. Damn it. No, it's still 0.11. All right, good enough. <sighs> 30. Battery died again. I don't know where. Got five more done. This process is taking so long. I don't think I've ever killed the battery so many times and filled up the SD card for a single video before. Not entirely sure if this little crimper was designed for this kind of a duty cycle. The handle's getting stiff. 
I'm wondering if I should let it take a break for a bit. It doesn't feel like it's warm though. Well, if it breaks, then I stop until another one comes in. Oh, there's some oil coming out. Shit. <sighs> that one came out a bit funny. Hmm? Resistance is fine. All right, that's 40. 50 more to go. I need a break though. Close my eyes and I began to see. God, I know my singing is bad, but it brings me joy. 45, that's the halfway mark. Hey tatters, we're halfway done. You have no idea that you're gonna live on a boat, do you? I think you'll enjoy sitting up on the top deck, being outdoors, watching the fishies and the birds. Hey, old man, a sailor's life for you? Fifty, over the halfway mark. Oh, shillings. Got a wire out. But we've seen before that doesn't affect the uh, internal or the resistance. It didn't affect it here. Two thirds done. <laughs> to be made of love, sinner now is. I think that's my first 10 ohm. Wow, it started dipping up to 11. My, uh, my hands are killing me. <laughs> if you're gonna build a really big battery, um, you're gonna do everything yourself like I am. It's a lot of fun, but uh, keep the pain relievers close by. <laughs> The deed is done. That's 90. <laughs> I hurt so much. <laughs> I still have to put the shrink tubing on it, but that's relatively minor work compared to what it took to make this badge. Look at them all. Holy crap. 90. 4x10 gauge flexible bus bars. Oh, fuck. Maybe I shouldn't make any spares yet. Maybe I should save these. I'll put them into a bag. So I don't have a lot of spares of those ring terminals. When I'm done and all six packs are built, then I can sit down and make a spares kit out of what's left. Yeah, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm going to find my heat gun and start cutting up some shrink tubing and shrinking all these. All 90 of them measured at 0.11 micro ohm of resistance. Every single one of them, with the exception of this one, which is 0.14, but that's why it's often in the discard pile. <laughs> you did, girl. You did good little lab. Hydraulic crimper, you didn't die on me. What lengths do I want? Let's say about, how does that look? That looks good. So I've got 90 cables, which means I need 180 of these. This is gonna be my standard. Let's start cutting. Why does the camera keep turning off? Well, anyway, there's all the shrink tubing. The camera's turned off a couple of times. I don't know if I didn't click record and it just turned off. Let's keep going. Ow, 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 ow. 
Drawing 700 watts. I haven't had my system plugged into the mains in a very long time, months. So all of this work is being done off of solar power. I think what I'm gonna do is do one side at a time and then alternate so I don't keep burning myself. Okay, I think I need to have three queued up. It's still really hot. The first 10 actually completely done flexible bus fires, whatever we want to call them. It would have been more energy efficient if I had have prepped all of these before I turned that on. I can't really just turn it off because it goes into a cooling cycle that I can't cancel once it's started. Oh well, live and learn. It's a bit of a sharp up here. I'm trying to fold over. 30 done. I'm actually making a dent in the battery finally. Picasso. That's 40. No, get down. Don't scratch the curtains. Ow. Ow. 50. 70. No, 60. 60. That was 60. What are you boys doing over there? You's fighting. Hey. Buddy. <laughs> Cats. I hate tatters. You like more tatters? <laughs> no, you want food. Last one. The deed is done. All 90 of them tested 0.11 milliohms. The batteries themselves, 0.21 milliohm. So these will generate more heat during a discharge than the wires well, which is fantastic. It's, I'm very happy with that. There's still a lot of building to do. The next thing I need to do is start charging these up. Create a battery out of 16, connect it to the Quattro, charge it up, top balance it, repeat five more times after that. And I really need to figure out what I'm gonna do for the boxes for the batteries. I need to figure something out um, I'm going to spend, I've got to edit this into a video. So by the time you're watching this, that part's done. There's still a lot of work to do in front. Um, oh my God. I'm so glad this is done though. This, these are awesome and holy crap. I don't want to do that again. <laughs> it's done. Let me give you a close up. Look at that. 90, nine zero. Hell yeah. I'm the Digital Mermaid. My arms and my hands and my back hurt. I'm gonna go rest now. See you next time.